Hi, I'm Jonathan, and I would like to talk about the future of Christianity. Well, let me let you know how crazy I am, because over the past three years, God has given me visions and prophetic words about this massive earthquake down the New Madrid fault line, where literally half the USA will fall into the sea. That's how serious it is. Um, it's not funny, but... I, related to that, I want to talk about the future of Christianity, and I have some things that God has been sharing with me, particularly over the last few months. The second coming of Christ Jesus will not happen without a massive outpouring of God's grace on the earth beforehand. Because as a result of this new Madrid earthquake, there will be a massive revival after this earthquake. A massive revival, the biggest revival the world has ever seen will happen after this earthquake. So the second coming of Christ Jesus will not happen until Islam has ceased to exist as a religion and the church has been established in former Muslim lands for decades. And it will also not happen until God has glorified Russia for God's glory. There will be a fusion of the Orthodox Church with the charismatic and evangelical movements after the New Madrid earthquake. But Christianity will fundamentally be Orthodox before the second coming of Christ. The martyrdom of Orthodox Eastern Rite and Coptic Christians in the Middle East today is the seed to orthodoxy being the chief form of Christianity globally after the New Madrid earthquake. And the Middle East will the Middle East will be the anchor to Christianity in the last days. The Bible verse I'm going to read in 2 Thessalonians. 2, verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Now this global apostasy will be accented by the fact that the entire world will become Christian following the New Madrid Revival. That's what I call it, the New Madrid Revival and the complete collapse of Islam. The world will completely turn its back on the greatest revival ever known. When none of Bible verse, this is in Matthew 11, chapter 20, Matthew chapter 11, verse 21 and 22. Woe to you, woe, <laughs> woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable, tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. I would like you to Wikipedia the history of Tyre and Sidon and see its parallel what I'm saying regarding the future of the United States of America. There's a parallel between Tyre and Sidon and the USA. The world will have been so thoroughly Christianized by the time of the Antichrist that the Antichrist will easily be mistaken for Jesus Christ and worshipped by an apostate church. The Antichrist will be, will be the Antichrist will be embraced as the second coming of Jesus hastily and without the church taking time to step back and question. This should be understood, this should be understood in light of the, of the world having gone through such upheaval after New Madrid. It's like a form of cosmic PTSD the world will experience after the New Madrid earthquake. The New Madrid earthquake will be an act of God's grace in that it will strengthen the church to maintain faithfulness to God during this tribulation 
years later. The New Madrid earthquake will also be an act of God's grace and that it will actually heal the world, or rather heal the church specifically, from the fear of the end times and fear of doom in terms of the future. Jesus will not, not, not come again while his second coming is a money-making industry. The effect of today's eschatology industrial complex will be to strengthen the argument of apostates in the latter part of this century. Basically, today's eschatology industrial complex is like a threat to Jesus. Like, you better come back. I wrote this book about your second coming, Jesus, so you better come back, like, in the next couple years, or people will not believe you anymore. So, the, my last Bible verse is 2 Peter, 2 Peter 3, verses 3 and 4. Knowing this first, the scoffers will come in the last days, walking, walking according to their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. That's what I was trying to say. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. You're awesome, and I love you.